What's up? Today we are going to talk six pack abs and how to get them. One of the biggest misconceptions and the question that I probably get asked the most is how do you build abs? What exercise should I do? How do I tone my stomach? Any kind of derivative of that question is probably the thing that I hear the most. And unfortunately, the reality of the situation is you cannot spot reduce body fat. You cannot just train your way to getting a flat stomach. The first thing that we need to solve here is your calories. How many calories are you actually consuming at the moment? And chances are you don't know. And that's okay. I didn't know either when I was first starting out. So the first thing is we're going to solve that issue by tracking the food that you're currently consuming. So there's loads of different calorie tracking apps that you can use. The first thing that I would do is download MyFitnessPal, not a sponsored link, uh, but it is just an app that I've used for years and it, it's pretty accurate as long as you're doing it and filling it in accurately. So once we have that, it's gonna give you your level that you're currently consuming. We then have to look at how, how many calories you should be consuming versus how many you actually are. There's lots of different ways to do this. But the easiest way to do this is to take your body weight in pounds and times that by 15. So for people in the UK or anybody that deals in kilos, times kilos by 2.2 and then times that by 15. That's gonna give you roughly your maintenance, okay? Roughly speaking, okay? We, we, we could argue about the inaccuracies of this, but this is the most simple ways of doing it. You're then gonna take 500 calories add that on top if you're looking to build muscle, or you're gonna subtract 500 calories if you're looking to lose body fat. Now, what I want you to do is compare these two numbers, okay, the, the calories that you're consuming right now. And what I would do is take an average of three days. Don't just do one day because you know that you'll be tracking, so you'll change your behavior, and you most likely will anyway, but by doing the three days, you'll create an average. Once we have the average of that, we're then gonna look at how many calories that you should be eating. If you're looking to diet and get a lean tone physique, then you need to be in a deficit. So that number of your body weight times 15 and then subtracting 500 calories, where are you in terms of that? Chances are you're probably way above that. So what we need to do is reduce your calories to this new target that we've just found. Okay, doing this is going to put you in a position where we're actually going to be able to lose body fat. And this is the most advantageous way of doing things. And, and the only way really, because we cannot out-train a calorie surplus. It, it's physi physiologically impossible. It's really important to note that most people are gonna be choosing these foods that they think are actually gonna be good for them. There are no fat loss foods. There are no foods that you should be consuming in order to attain the goal of a six pack. Instead, what we should be looking at here is the overall calories. Are they serving that ultimate goal of being 500 calories below that number that we calculated earlier on? So that means if you wanted to consume the foods that you enjoy, there's areas for that within those that number that we've set, that calorie target. Okay. Now, I'm not saying to go crazy and have all of your calories from refined foods, fast foods, those sorts of things, because that would be ludicrous. Because compositionally, that's not an issue, but then we have to look at the internal markers. You know, we, we have to consume nutritionally dense food. With my clients and myself, I like to use an 80-20 principle. So that means we'll be using 80% of nutritionally dense food and 20% free flexible foods and we need to eliminate the labels good food bad food simply doesn't serve us it just doesn't exist now what we need to look at is how nutritionally dense are these foods how quick am I going to get the energy from these this food that I'm about to consume and that's all going to be just strategically placed within your diet to make sure that we want to get the energy that we need we get the satiation and we get the enjoyment and we can create sustainability. So if your question are, can I eat pizza? Can I have chapatis, rotis, uh, ice cream? Any food that suddenly has come into your brain as I've just been speaking, the answer is yes. But 
The caveat to that is we have to fit it within the numbers. If it doesn't fit within the numbers and we go over that and it's over that consistently, then that is going to affect your results. So it's just about being strategic and planning out and making sure that we abide by those numbers long term. So now that we've addressed the calories, we're in a deficit. We can now look to build upon that. What I mean here is we're going to be looking at how many times a week can you train? Let's just say for argument's sake that you can train three times a week. And then maybe on that session, you're gonna be doing a little bit of cardio. Again, what exercises should I be doing here, Dan? You're going to want to fill that workout with the most advantageous exercises, compound exercises. And a compound exercise is a multi-joint exercise that is going to recruit more muscle than an isolation exercise. And actually, any ab exercise that you do directly is going to be an isolation exercise, which means you're going to be burning less calories and it's not going to recruit as much muscle. So although you feel it in the abs as you're doing a crunch or you're doing an oblique twist, it's not going to actually serve the goal that you have of having that toned lean physique and building that six pack. So again, you wanna make sure that you're starting in the gym with something like a full body workout, which you, know, you choose one exercise per body part, one for the legs, one for the back, one for the chest, shoulders, arms. And that's the best way to do it. And if you're doing a compound lift for each of those muscle groups, the chances are you're going to be using your abs a lot. Your abs actually act as a stabilizer for the, for the body. So if you're doing a squat, although you're not directly training the abs, as you're going through the journey and as you're starting to progressively overload those muscles, do more reps, do more sets, do more weight, the strength within those abs are going to build. And as you're building more muscle, as you maintain that calorie deficit, you're going to be building a leaner and more toned physique. So hopefully this has helped. Please like, comment below with your thoughts, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.